Let me get this knocked out the way for you guys. We go up against a team, everybody. Use the regs. See, so you can you can do this, and then you can kind of build upon it. We're just gonna kind of start somewhere, and then we're gonna end somewhere. I teach you. Like I said, if y'all know me enough, y'all know that I like this doubles Y slot week. And obviously, I like to work out of the verticals. As you can see, I've caught it over 14,000 times. <laughs> and I'm averaging well over 10 yards per catch. So that's that's obviously something that needs to be respected. Uh we're going to start with cover zero, then go to cover one, um, robber hole, and then I'll do uh, cover two, man, cover two, zone, Tampa, hard flag. You know, we'll just kind of go through the process. Um, we'll start with the robber press. All right, so the way you want to do this, you know that they're playing a lot of this. Sometimes it, it disguises like a cover two, but what you're going to do, you're going to attack cover two man the same way. But what you're going to do, you're going to have that option route, and then you're going to have two out routes on the outside, and you want something that's going to pull, like, the match zone underneath. So usually I'll just put, like, an, an in route behind it. That way I do have a viable check that also beats man. Um... Your primary reads is going to be off of where the third safety is. So if they're not using it, the third safety typically will gravitate to the deepest route on that side of the field. Uh, but your reads are basically going to be the option route in the wheel route versus any type of cover one. Okay. So we're just going to kind of read it here. And you can just wait for that running back to go up the field. Obviously, the pass rush and practice mode, you might have to do the. Uh, slide protects but most of the time in actual game you won't have to slide protect but slide protect over there if we're not blocking the running back and then just put an id over there should be good like i said third safety is on the other side and you can just chunk it down will routes b man coverage okay um Kind of slow it down if you want. Usually, if they're user in the third safety, you see how that corner route's over there. If you've gotten real good with free forming, you can make that throw as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to do it. Like I said, put the two out routes. And you can put him in spin route while he's motioning over. That way you ain't got you're not stop stuck doing the fucking the hot rod adjustments. All right. So now we're going to just bust the wheel. Slight lead over top. Takes a little practice. Don't throw a bullet pass. Sometimes, like, man coverage will pick off bullet passes, but they can't pass, they pick off anything else. So. Usually you get that slight release. You get good with the free form, you should be able to make that versus cover one. And Maddox, he's, he's a good corner, you know. And I'm the fact that I just torched him with a 86 speed um, receiver, it says a lot about, you know, concept. Just a slight lead. Sometimes you can wiggle it. See, I wasn't supposed to throw a bullet pass. Try not to throw a bullet pass on deep throws like that. Oh, I say, just come in the lab. Then get your practice reps. Or you just kind of break that tendency. And, but you pretty much see where it's getting open. You know, just kind of play with it a little. So that's going to be for dealing with cover one. All right. Now, if I'm dealing with people that spam cover zeros, this is going to be so much easier, right? Most time, cover zero, everything's going to be off. Now, sometimes they might try to press it. But it's still it's still going to be all right. All you have to do is just put a slant route, and basically you could do it either side. It doesn't matter. Um, we'll we'll do the left side, and then we'll do the right side. Um, 
obviously if they're in a nickel or something, you know, the left side is going to be a little bit stronger. They're going to have extra body over there, but you should still be able to get the easy completion on the slant underneath. We're basically going to use the seam route to kind of pull the coverage off, turn them around, and then the other side, same thing, just put a slant over there. And he's just going to use that tight end to put the safety off. And sometimes you can take it to the house, okay? But you're basically going to whip screen off the safety with that vertical route. Now, if you want, you can smart route that vertical route so you get a little bit more push downfield. I don't know why he just threw that out of bounds with a perfect accuracy, but sometimes this game has its issues. He's doing it again. I don't know why. Figure out what's going on. Yeah, just pull back on the stick. I think they're starting to do that KO shift. But that's pretty much how you're going to be. Cover zero doesn't really take rocket science, all right? So we're not going to spend too much time with it. If you're dealing with cover one hole, you know, robber's one thing. Robber's usually going to press. Hole is going to play a little bit off coverage. Pretty much going to be the difference. All right, so it's going to cover one hole. Cover one hole might look like a cover three sometimes. Um, usually, I will attack this a little bit differently than I would with a traditional um, reason being is because of the depth of the corners and you're not necessarily always going to know just feeling off of it. If it's cover three or cover one, it's very good disguise if you don't do motions. So just kind of can't kind of take that into the factor. So to be less risk, what I'll typically do is I'll just have something crossing underneath. So I'm going to have a little underneath mesh, and I'm really just going to attack the outsides. Um, the way I do it, like versus cover three, I'm going to go a little bit short. Versus cover one hole, I'm going to wait until that receiver gets to the depth of the cornerback and turns the cornerback around, and then I'm going to free form. Okay. So we're just going to go right here, turn him around. Free form it, try to get a little wiggle on it. Sometimes you got to play with it. Obviously, one thing that I do do with here is this is going to be typically more of a hash mark thing. I wouldn't necessarily do this across the middle of the field because of the alignment. But see, you, you see how you're basically forcing an, an inside shade there, and you got an outside shade on there because you're on the left hash. So it's going to be your difference maker. Again, we'll try it again. Now I can get the, the lead that I want to attack it on the outside. Let me show it one more time. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Like I said, just going to run a simple underneath in route. I will slow it down and show you that you do have an option in case. See how we pull all them guys underneath? And if we, if we have time to wait on it, those underneath routes will mesh. And then I'll have one over there open and possibly the hole is going to gravitate to one. He can't watch both of them. Okay. So you have a nice little mesh underneath that you can attack. But like I said, I like to get that free form on the outside. It's one on one to me. Um, if you don't want to do it that way and you feel like you want to have a little bit more control, you can always just go with the slant route. You go like that. I need to overlead it. I, I usually don't, unless they're pressed or if they're shading underneath, I might. And actually, because I'm doing it like that, I don't necessarily need to put the running back on a route. He can actually stay back and block on this. And then just bump, just like that. All right, so that's going to be dealing with your cover one hole off press. All right, so that pretty much covers both of them. Now we're going to deal with the people that 
every now and then you can uh, you'll get these Tampa two players, right? Uh, usually, I see people run Tampa two; they'll audible to it when they're playing a lot of cover three sky or three match, and I'm hitting them with the quick passes, and they'll audible to a cover two. Cover two, you're gonna be it's gonna be just like how you do cover one in terms of uh, when you're gonna get rid of the ball, but Tampa two, you're gonna get zone chuck. So what's gonna happen on the fade route? You can't quick pass. You quick pass it, it's gonna be a pick. You got to wait until he gets chucked. And once he gets chucked, what happens is it slows him down and it has this guy going vertical at the safety. So it prevents the safety from getting outside the numbers. Okay. So that's very key for you beating cover two in this situation. So I'm just going to read it right here. I always want to go to the field side, not the boundary side. So whatever you do on the back side, like you could probably just hold that deep half over there with a comeback route. You don't necessarily need to send him deep. And then you can kind of occupy anything underneath with like a drag or something like that. Okay. But reading off the off the press, and then you're going to get an outside pass lead to the field side, just like that. We'll slow it down. Just kind of pay attention how the comeback route it's going to make you give you a second option to attack. Okay, see how we're pulling that half safety outside the numbers on the left in case they decide they want to use that route where Adams is. You're going to have that tight end blown right up the scene for a one play touchdown if you do it that way, too. So that's pretty much how you're going to deal with the Tampa, too. Again, just you can have that. You know. I can actually go with that smart route. But primarily, you want to read that zone chuck. If it ain't there, like I said, you're going to have the tight end right up the middle. All right, so that's going to be killing cover two. Now, the hard flats will be a little bit different if, because you won't get that zone chuck. So basically, you're going to attack hard flats like I would with a base cover three, you're gonna pass it a little bit faster. So I gotta find a cover two hard flat. I don't know if they got one. Let me see. Not every defense has them. They got an, an invert hard flat. What's going on? Child abduction. Hayden Perryman, five year old black male, abducted. Thir abductor, abducted by a 13 year old. Driving a white. Hayden Perryman, five year old black male, abducted. Abductor is believed to be 13 year old Janaisha Gunn driving a white 2011 Chevrolet Equinox with Alabama tag 6357 BL5. Last seen near Gibbs Village in Montgomery, Al. Direction of travel is unknown at this time. If seen or if you have information, call 911 or HP. So, a kid just abducted a kid. <laughs> What's really going on? Uh, I don't see a hard flat in the nickel. Uh, da, da. No, I don't have two sticks to do it. Let me see if I can find one. Okay, they got a cover two hard flat in down. All right, so again, when you're dealing with a cover two hard flat, you're not going to get a zone chuck, okay? So you're not going to sit there and wait for that animation because Basically, what happens is that corner is just going to kick to the flat and that deep half, he'll be more susceptible to defending that fade route because you're not going to get chucked to get that outside lead that you want on. So what you're going to do on hard flats is I like to put two comebacks on the outside so that I can pull that safety to the outside. Okay. We'll do it like that. 
Got the hard, got the comeback. But he matched up with that. So it's like, I guess that's a hard flat with the match. Let me turn match off. And you got the reverse, let's run up the seams. Uh, it's not how I wanted to run that. Usually most people don't run match when they shade, so. So I didn't play it like the post this. Now it should. You get the comebacks. You should be able, able to go right up the scene. Um, another way you can actually do this is pull them back like that. There we go. That should be a little bit better. You want to pull that safety. So that'll be how you attack the cover two hard flat. Because like I said, you're not going to get that zone chuck. I'm going to show you. Kind of pay attention. Yeah, he does his zone chuck and that safety goes right to him. You could hit that pass, but it'll be a quick leap. Like, I'm going to show you. Like, you have to throw it immediately if that's what you're going to hit. You have one, two, three, throw. It's a small window, but if you anticipate that that's what they're running, that's where you could probably hit them as well. All right, so it's like I said, it's a little bit different than Tampa because you ain't got to deal with the zone chuck. Um, if I'm dealing with cover six, obviously most sometimes you'll deal with it match, sometimes you'll deal with it off. If it's off, I treat it just like I would a cover four drop on one side or a cover two on one side. Um, but with it on, it's a little bit different with the match principles, but you should still be able to Clear the seams just like you would with a quarters defense or a cover two. So we're going to leave the match on for this. Try to match up with it and do most of these in the four if I can. Um, again, like I said, you got to be able to identify. Obviously, we know that the cover two side is going to be on this side over here because of the depth of the corner. And then we have the quarters over here because of the depth of the corners that I'm just kind of paying attention to. Um, usually what you want to go ahead and do, if you see that, you just want to put a comeback over there. Um, if it's match, and usually I'll try to smart route it so that I, I have time. Because if you throw it before he pivots back, you're going to have an inaccurate pass. You got to be able to throw it like once the ball, like he's already coming back to the ball. That's when you're supposed to throw it. So if you smart route it, it gives you more time to for him to get into his route and come back to it before the pressure breaks the pocket. If you leave it as is, you could do that for a three-man rush. You can't do it for a four-man rush because the pressure will get to the pocket before he gets to, to his break on his uh, route. Um, and again, like I said, on the backside, I'm just going to keep everything over there as is. Now, what I can do... I could just probably just run a drag if I'm not worried about anything else. Um, again, like I said, it's cover two on this side. So it's pretty much where you want to hit it at. If he, if he doesn't, you want the matchup down the field, you can always just go with the drag. Off. You just kind of pay attention to that vertical hook. If you don't want to do it that way, you can run the drag on the backside with the comeback over there, and you can run the comeback deep. Um, and then this way, you can kind of attack on that crosser sometimes if he doesn't get his own shot. Like, like I said, if they leave match off, he'll cross. If they leave it on, he kind of just goes vertical. So usually, like I said, if I'm dealing with that, sometimes I just take the check now. If I, if, if I don't make any hot rod adjustments, I'll take the check. But probably the best way to do it is just you know, to come back on the back side and then make them go vertical on the other side, you can get that drag route. And then probably put your fastest receiver there if you want, and that way you can cut it upfield. Or if you want, you can put your running back there and, you know, make a, make a defender miss, prop on one side and, and basic cover two on the other side. So I'll go ahead Still trying to get used to these mode buttons in practice mode. Keep forgetting to turn it on. Turn it off. All right, turn it on. 
default. Let's see, when match is off, this guy right here, he's not going to get zone chuck. Okay. So usually anything cover four, you can do a quick pass straight to a quarter flat. I'm going to show you. I shouldn't have to make no adjustments. This will be a quick pass. If it'll let me fucking quick pass it. Sometimes that happens. It's like you sitting there pressing the button. You don't fucking respond. But let's do it again. If match off, you should be able to just fire right there. Easy all day. Easy 10, 15 yards. They want to sit in that shit all day. They don't want to turn the match on. They're not going to get his own truck. They're going to get easy completions. Um, if you want, you probably put someone with a high catch in traffic. Doesn't necessarily have to be fast because slow beats zone, fast beats man. So it's a zone coverage. It's time to really just pop it in there. Okay. Um, the other way, like if you choose to wait on it, you can actually go to the other side. Like I said, you can just kind of pull any coverages, or you could actually run a stop and then just pull him to the outside. And then that option route should sometimes he'll cut. I don't know why he didn't cut. Could be could be dependent on the hash marks in games. But it's just something you might want to kind of pay attention to though. But I think other than that, if he's not gonna cut, then I can just hit Uber. Right there. Pretty simple. Doesn't really take a lot. Let's kind of get into the next one. Uh, let's go over to cover threes. It's going to be three variants. You're going to have your seams. You're going to have your matches, buzz seams, your skies. I'm going to show, show you the basic one. We'll start with the sky first. Obviously, if y'all already know, I'm going to attack this side of the field. Uh, on the back side, Usually you can go with like a zig and a dig route. The reason why the zig is because he's going to pull any zones underneath. He's going to pull that hook zone. If you just go with a straight out route, he's he'll probably get open, and he's not going to affect that seam flat or curl flat as much. You need to be able to affect that curl flat and that hook curl it can, so that you can hit this dig route if you know if it's something that you want to kind of check to uh, but primarily what we're going to go ahead and look for is this route by myers um with cover three you want to throw this pretty fast you want to flick your your free form straight to the sideline or slightly pull back at like an eight o'clock angle do not lead it forward if you lead it forward you'll probably throw it out of bounds or you'll probably overthrow it try not to do any lead forwards on any type of vertical passes unless your opponent presses or shades underneath that would be the only time all right so it'd be just a quick pass and three form on and get that user catch do it a couple times for you guys quick pass as soon as, soon as i see him shift his hips on cover three. I'm not worried about him turning around if he's in zone. As soon as I see him shift his hips, that tells me it's zone. That tells me I can go ahead and throw it immediately because technically his back turns slightly just enough for you to hit it. And just want to be fast with it, really. As soon as you see him flip his hips, boom, it's open. And you'll kill cover three spammers all day with this shit. They'll, they'll eventually start trying to audible, thinking that that'll help. And remember all the other show, shit I showed you. You'll see the basic cover two, Tampa twos, and it's just going to be a passing clinic if, if that becomes their way of playing defense. So you can actually use this to open up your offense and basically cripple somebody's defense. I promise you, like 90% of the defenses you face, you're going to see single high safety. Okay, so being able to attack single high safeties like this is going to be pivotal to your offensive game plan. Okay, so it really doesn't require too much. This is going to cover three all day. Reason why I started doing this, if y'all rem remember when I was on the last gen, current gen, whatever the fuck y'all want to call that shit, PS4, uh, y'all remember I used to run a play called Deep Outs. Well, on the PS4, the out routes were, it, it annihilated like every coverage, but specifically cover three, 
like you would get a nice pass lead on it and you would always hit the corner 10 15 yards 10 15 yards wide open all the way down the field and i tried to do it on next gen and the routes weren't as crisp but i did pay attention to where my receiver was getting the ball so basically i'm taking what i was getting out of that play and improvising it to a vertical route so i'm still technically getting the ball where i would on a deep out the only thing is he's not running the out route he doesn't have to stop and pivot he's he's still able to go downfield okay so that's, that's really just kind of what you're kind of open for just a slight lead and that third will not be able to adjust and make a play on the ball especially like you get real good at this the more reps you get in practice mode the, the better you're going to get I try to tell y'all spend 10 15 minutes in in practice mode practicing free forming and clicking on and user catching i mean it makes a world of a difference i mean you can go from barely passing 100 yards in a game to getting six seven hundred yards especially if you know what you're doing all right uh, i'm not going to spend too much time on it but we'll go look at the other side right here because sometimes you're going to deal with people that try to bracket that receiver and you're going to you're going to need to have a second check down read all right so the reason why i'm going with the hook here is i mean the zig here is to kind of navigate that hook and that curl so that i have that backside dig so he's going to go in, he's going to hold those two zones just enough to clear out. Now I'm going to show you why I'm doing that instead of doing the out route for this situation. So if I just do with a straight out route, he doesn't pull, see how he doesn't pull him out? See how that guy got back in my way? You don't use zig routes, and I'll say this because it needs to be said. Zig routes aren't to beat man coverage. Zig routes are to manipulate zone. I'll say it one more time. Zig routes are to beat and manipulate zone, not to be used against man. If you keep trying to run zig routes to beat man, nine times out of ten, that defender is still going to be kind of close to him, especially if they shake. And it's not necessarily going to get open. You're not going to get separation to go upfield. Now, this is where it changes. China routes beat man. Okay? They don't necessarily beat zone very good. China routes, which is basically the opposite of a zig route, which comes inside, like it'll pivot out and then come in, they beat zone very good. Whereas, I mean, actually, they beat man very good. They just don't beat zone as, as good. So it's just something that you might want to kind of pay attention to um and, and and kind of emphasize so like i said if you want to attack cover three put that zig route so that you can hold that hook and that curl down just enough so that you can get that dig route over the back side so you see how he pulled them and see how he followed let me double check make sure it matches off Forget. I keep hitting the wrong button. I'll get better at it, fellas. Sorry, I'm trying to teach y'all stuff. All right, so that was default. See how it matched on default? Now we're going to turn match on. All right, so this will be with match. He's gonna be a little bit deeper, but you see how see how he matched down and the dig route got open. So he played a little bit deeper, but boom, right there. So that'll be your secondary option if they start trying to key in on you hitting the uh, outside free form. Um, except I still had an option. Over there. Let me show you how to attack this match real quick. You gotta be good on the free form versus match. Because he's not he's not gonna go as far outside as he would in a regular drop. Like he it's gonna be a little bit tighter of a throw. 
And so I just gotta get paid and right and we'll be okay. See how Mash he almost plays it like man. So we might be able to kind of wait on it. Let me do that. We wait on it. Then, yeah, that's probably gonna be what you want to do. Wait a little bit at this match. But be looking like that. We're gonna be just like man. Just wait till he gets downfield and he separates from that second defender. Still got to practice on the practice mode and practice. It's the only way you're going to get good at this freeform game. I tried to rack it. Usually, just want an aggressive catch. And then try to come back underneath. It's a little bit more complex, but like I said, if you practice. Then you'll get it. Obviously, most of y'all play with elite quarterbacks, so y'all don't have the issues that I have sometimes when my guys just throw what what the fuck balls. And I'm just like, bro. So I'm just practice this a little bit. Probably could actually motion hike. But it's just something you gotta practice. I think sometimes if it gets to a situation where I feel like he's not going to make a play, I will swap my quarterback. I mean, I will swap my receivers so that I have a better receiver over there that has a higher chance. So let's do it again. Like I said, just play with it a little bit. Or you could actually go with the comeback route. You know, he should pull off. Let me do it like this. So it'll be a hitch to hold that scene. He's going to have to chew it. If he kind of peels off. And then you can actually, with a hitch route, it's like a whole route combo. You can always throw that swing under hitch if you want separation. So he's going to pull out. You know where that goes. So you can get easy yards doing that concept in there as well. So it's just not like, oh, you're just running the same, same thing. You might be in the same play, but you can do a lot of different concepts. Um, if I, I might try something like that, see if he goes to, if he don't go to the flat, or if he does go to the flat, I can throw it over. I'll show you. And I also do this versus like off man coverage, like cover one. So if he pulls down to the flat, He's going to kind of sit right there. I don't want to throw it where he can lurk it. Or you just want to drag and do it like that. So this is something you can kind of play with. It depends on how the games go. Um, freeze. Um, dealing with the cover fours. As I was showing you earlier, we'll do it with, we'll do match off first. We'll do quarters and bumps. They're going to play the same with match off, so I don't need to show you both of them, but match on, I'll show you. With match off, like I said, you're just going to bust that scene quick pass, 10 yards, all day. That's an easy way to tell if match is on. Like, match on, they get his own chuck up the seams. Match off, he just go, he breaks off to the flat. Like, just, yeah, he just immediately breaks to the flat. Sometimes they're not going to let you get that quick pass, unfortunately. I don't know why. But it's just kind of hold the button. Just, you ain't even got a free point. Just instant pass. 
you know, you'll destroy cover four quarters or even any any type of cover four, cover four drop. It just it destroys. They're gonna they'll what what happens eventually is they'll start trying to bring another user over there, and then the next thing that I'm gonna do is I, I'm gonna run these two out routes, and, and I'm gonna do it all day until you get out. Okay, so boom. Don't hold the button too long. Simple, just kind of press release, bro. Let's go. Like two hour outs on the outside. If they don't want to respect that, bro, you got to, you got to check now. So there's different ways that you can attack cover four with matches off. Now, if we're dealing with the matches on, you want to attack it a little bit different. You know you're going to get chucked in the seams. So that means we can't go vertical up the seams against match. So what I like to do, try to get a mesh with some high lows. Um, basically, what this is going to do, it's going to kind of keep those safeties at bay, and then I can manipulate anything underneath, and basically just have a field day just think and dunk. Um, obviously your first read will be the two smoke screens. If you just want to get a quick pass and rack catch it, gain three, four yards, you could do that. Or you could sit there and you can wait on the slant, see if they use or chases the slant, then you have your check release route. So we're just going to kind of get the quick passes on the smoke screens, get them on both sides. Three, four yards. Here we go, here right. We go. And we're going to go with the slants. Going to read where their user's at. You find you can sneak them behind. Because, like I said, you start hitting them on the flats, they might start shading their coverages. You know. But you know how match zones, they'll kind of pivot a lot, especially if you have a lot of routes coming to them and you kind of pay attention. Both of those slants are wide open. You can get a underneath pass lead. Do it one more time. Got to hit the tight end. Tight end will probably be a later read, but... Depends on who your tight end is. Some some of y'all might have like a, a fast tight end that can do it very good. But really just kind of use them there to mesh. You can pump fake it. See how that slant route gets open. So that'll be dealing with quarters. Now, what if they're doing pumps? Let me show you. We can actually try the same thing. I'm not sure if they got a palms in here. Yeah. With palms, the outside defender plays the flat. Okay. It'll, it'll play like a cover two. Like if, let's say, I decide I want to run, this would be the way you want to attack palms. It'd be more of a slant flat concept. To open the middle now if you have the time if you have a good line you'll have the time you might want to roll out with it probably just probably go vertical up there so technically got a flat rear closing. right there like I said it, it really comes down to the quarterback you might have to slide protect Still look like that. Just gotta wait on it. Get and hit it right there. Like I say, you play someone enough, they're gonna kind of give away what kind of defense they're running. But see how that vertical pulled three defenders. 
and then we kind of play clear out. So what we could do is instead of running a check release, we're going to run M to the flat, M vertical, slant, flat, slant, throw a belt. Gotta play with um what's his name? Might go vertical with the tight end on the other side. Yeah, like that, two verticals up. Eagles got a good pass rush and probably just wants to do this slide to take. That's all you want to do, just kind of have your your high lows. If you have a good quarterback, you can roll out and make the throw. Connell, not necessarily a roll out quarterback. But you see how you get wide open. Assuming you have the time. Most of my stuff isn't going to be predicated for you getting one play touchdowns because my team isn't formatted to basically run that. My line is not going to protect me very long. Uh, my quarterback can't throw very deep. So, you know, they basically just kind of work with what my team has, give you all some easy concepts to kind of move through each game, you know, and keep your, keep your opponent guessing, you know. So that's pretty much going to be the bulk of any defense that you're going to deal with. Obviously, there will be other things that you have to kind of throw into the mix. Like if you're dealing with zone blitzes or um, overloads or anything like that. Um, I think the last thing I want to show you is cover for a drop. So obviously... Um, like I was saying earlier, my team can't necessarily do shot plays on cover or drop because my quarterback, one, can't throw it that far. And if he does, it's not accurate. And two, my receivers aren't fast enough to slip back past the safety. So, like I said, I don't spend a lot of time trying to trying to do those. Pointless for me. It's just wasting um, opportunities. Um, if you're dealing with cover four drop, obviously, like I said, those – out routes are probably the best way to kind of hit it for quick, cheap yards. Don't hold the um, the receiver button too long, or you will throw an inaccurate pass. Try to try to get a nice window of a press release. Okay, we got green right there, but that's pretty much what you want to do against Cover Four, bro. Make them respect it enough. And then you can kind of matric matriculate them a little bit. They might try to start running cover six. And then uh, that that route that I showed you earlier in the game, go ahead and hit you with it one time. That I use it against uh, cover one, but you can also use it to be cover two and cover six. So let me find it. Always identify the side that the... If they have auto flip one, it should already be lined up correctly. All you have to do is just motion him over and put him in the out route. So apparently they flip the play when you do that. And, but a, a user typically doesn't. And like I said, you want to practice your user catch. Out route. Who cares if he flips his play? Sometimes you gotta get a wiggle on it because he'll he'll overrun it. Like if your receiver is too fast, that's why you say you need zone. You need slow receivers to be zone. Um, because if he's too fast, he'll overrun it, and you gotta stop that. You gotta you gotta get that pull off. You can't overread it. See how inaccurate he is. Well, I say do not. 
do not pull up on the stick to pass in anything 20 yards down the field. And if you do, it can barely flick it. I could have got that. Pretty much. Like I said, you play with it a little bit on the practice mode, practice your free form, practice your user catching. Like I said, Maddox is a good corner. That's why I like to say I, I usually use a slower receiver on him so that he doesn't pull him back as fast. So it's like you might want to put a tight end or something right there. It's not going to be fast with match on now. If match is off, it shouldn't matter too much. So if I go with someone slower, it should get better results. Better separation. See the difference? See, a lot of people be sleeping on using slow people, man. They just want to have the fastest people all the way across the board but schematically you need slow guys so you see the difference see how he, it's just that little bit of difference he's giving me better separation than a 94 speed receiver is because he's not pulling the zone to his threshold so like I said get you some slow guys if you don't if you don't have slow receivers on your team start using tight ends or something you know, so use somebody who's a little slow where you can get a little bit better separation. It's crazy, but it's just, go, it's maddening, you know? So you just kind of take that, take it how you want to say, take it, whatever. But they're not going to let me keep doing it in practice mode, but I just wanted to kind of show you guys uh, the difference between using a fast receiver and a slow receiver to beat zone, even if it's match. Uh, like I said, I'll go back to, this, to the fast guy and show you the difference. Sometimes you might be able to get a good time for that was a good pass. Even though it said poor accuracy, we made it happen. Sometimes you might want to smart him. See, over, see how he's overrunning it? And I have to slow him down. But if you don't have like a quarterback with like a lead arm strength, you're probably not going to. In a smart but that's a, that's one way that you can do it okay um hopefully this guide kind of helps some of you guys you know i'm always trying to look for ways to kind of give y'all a, a simple game plan that can kind of elevate your, your your game a little bit but I'm going to play some regs. As always, I do appreciate y'all tuning in. Um, if you just join the stream, just reset the stream, and uh, you'll basically see. <laughs> it's not rocket science. Pretty much straightforward, easy way to attack every coverage in the game because Madden was lazy at making defensive shells for this game. And most people don't think to use or adjust a lot of their coverages to create some of the realistic coverages like cover five, cover seven, cover, you know, you don't, you don't see a lot of this stuff. You know, I'll run it occasionally, but your typical Madden player, they don't, they don't know football. They sit there, they watch YouTube videos and that's their game. They don't understand logic or they don't understand match principles or they don't understand general how to play defense. They'll spam one play. Over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, thinking that, that one play ends all.
But then you'll have those people that think that they know what they're doing by modeling. Modeling doesn't save you, bro. I can still tell what defense are in. Two NFL franchises with so much history, so much tradition, getting set to do battle here. As it'll be the San Francisco 49ers taking on the Las Vegas Raiders. And the 49er hands team does its job. So an onside kick failed in the first quarter. Not sure if you can see the logic there. This is not apparent, is it? You almost have to go deeper, I think, and maybe if we've tried to work along with them and, and speculate a little bit here, they almost feel like they need to steal possessions in this game. If they don't match up possession for possession with the opposite team, they got to steal it and try and gain an advantage. And they tried, they just didn't get it done. Purdy going to the air right away. Being chased out left. after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Purdy looking to throw. So we could be there, but it's incomplete. It's important to try to get him to throw out of the backfield. They love when he can do an open space, and I believe that he creates mismatches that can exploit. Here on third. 
Out of the gun, Purdy. Got a man right side, it's McCaffrey. And he'll be brought down at the 27 yard line. That's going to bring up fourth down, only a gain of two there. So Purdy off and Moody on for the 49er field goal. And his kick is good. And the 49ers take a 3 0 lead. So after drive number three here, we have a score, and it's three points after the field goal. I would say the feeling out process for both these teams, I'd say it's over, partner. Everyone understands what's going on now. You've kind of probed a little bit. Now you want to start throwing the big shots. First three points up on the board. Could be significant. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. The Las Vegas offense ready to start this next drive. They're coming off a fourth down gamble that last drive that backfired CD, but really not as badly as it could. Their defense held up and only gave up three points. And what they want to do is play off the momentum the defense gave them. Only giving up the three points in that situation if they be on a fourth down. Stop shading underneath, bitch. Maybe there's something. First and ten. Now it's O'Connell. Under pressure and down it goes. They sack him back at the 36. Now following the sack, they'll come up here on a second down and 12. Back to throw, O'Connell. Side complete. That's Jacobs. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it within an eyelash. Dropped it to one. An excellent gain, 35 yards. This play is a thing of beauty when it works as designed because they let the running back slip out of the backfield and head down the sideline on the wheel route. Number one, it's easy for him to get lost. And number two, really tough for the linebacker to run with him. And this falls right on the money and leads to a big play. And that yeah. covered beautifully. Their defenders stayed home and they'll stop him behind the line. Nope. Shit's done. Too many people glitching and shit. Not enough people sticking around. The Super Bowl's it. That's it. Now come. Defender there, and that's a loss of five on the sack. These sacks now, they're starting to pile up, Charles, and that front seven defensively, they've had their way with this offensive line. And I think at this stage, we have to start thinking about different play calls. Tackle. 
Purdy now to throw off the play action. Sliding out of the pocket. And down he goes. Brought down the Raiders sack. Second and 12. Now Purdy. Under pressure, and they got to him again. They bring him in off the corner that time, and he gets home for a loss of six. They've got him over 30 yards of turf so far, but the sack knocks him backwards. And that air is the momentum they were building. Good opportunity for the defense to escape this drive before they get to the end zone. Man open, that's Debo Samuel. They wind up getting 16, but even that's not quite enough. It's fourth down. Purdy will set up to throw it here. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is out of bounds, but not the let me get on my news. A defensive breakdown allows a pickup of 16 on fourth down. So the drive stays alive after the fourth down conversion. First and ten inside the 30. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. The 49ers moving hastily. They're scurrying to the line. Purdy. Going to get this out right here to McCaffrey. And he is out of bounds, but first he gets it inside the 10 to the 7. A well-executed 22-yard gain. That turned into a very well-orchestrated play right there. Going to work his way out of the backfield to the right. And after he looked it in, he found plenty of space to roam and picked up big yardage. Touchdown 49ers! Brandon Ayuk, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the 49ers go coast to coast and finish the drive off with six points. Moody good with the extra point, and the lead is down two. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. And he is out of bounds as he'll start up past the 30. The Raider offense set to get this drive started. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Now a timeout single for them. They'll get it with 10 seconds to go before half time. On right, first and 10, it's O'Connell. So three seconds here remain in the half on as the field goal unit to see about getting three points. Carlson able to put this one through, and that will do it for this first half. Time for a break. We've hit halftime. Two quarters down. Two still remain. We step aside. This is the NFL on EA Sports. And we welcome you back now. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon getting set for quarter number three here. And how about this line out of the locker room? An onside kick attempt. The Raiders with the lead already, and they will get the football here as the second half is now underway. Is it there? They're down, but starting the third quarter, they're with the onside kick. What'd you think? Well, I think that they're looking at it as we may not have as many possessions in this game as we want. There may be that sense and that feel that they've got to go ahead and make something happen, steal possession, try and steal some points, and get themselves right back in a position to try and win the game. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. First 
first down throw, Connell. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Out of the shotgun, here's O'Connell. He's going to find and complete it to win for him. And he's down inside the five at the four before he's out of bounds. That one good for 17 yards, and now they've got it first and goal. on first and goal. And that one covered beautifully. Their defenders stayed home and they'll stop him behind the line. It's second and goal. Back to the eight-yard line now. Throwing. O'Connell. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. Nothing up and down. He had to get that one out in a hurry because he just knew he was about to take a big shot. Probably couldn't get his legs into the throat. Became an all throw trying to check it down to his running back. Incomplete. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. Oh, that's going to hurt a bit because they needed to come through with a completion there. Now a drive that started with great field position is facing fourth down. The offense stays out there. A big challenge here for this far back, but they're going for it on fourth and goal. They'll go for it. O'Connell. That's to his running back complete. And he will be brought down well shy of the goal line. They get the completion but cannot push forward into the end zone. And the 49ers are going to get the football back. The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. And another drive starts with them huddling in their end zone, Charlie. Where have we seen this before? Very recently, but the last time they had it backed up like this, they took it the length of the field. Hard to do that once, let alone the idea of doing it twice. But of course, that's the goal. So, as a second oh, idea, come on. get first downs. Help yourself with field position and help your defense out. Well, he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. Touchdown, the pick six. Debo Samuel. 94 yards, and the 49ers have taken the lead here in this third quarter. Purdy will throw for it. They'll roll him out right. And this will be caught. And then jump for it, too. Here for two. And of course, on the two point try, had the option to run or pass. They pass it there, and it works. Felt pretty straightforward, didn't it? An open receiver, ball's put on him, two points for them. And the touchdown apparently wasn't enough. They're going to go for the onside kick here. And the hands team for the Raiders able to secure it. Throwing on first down, O'Connell. And that one to the right side and incomplete. Devontae Adams, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. And O'Connell now to throw. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. And I say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. Shotgun, O'Connell. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to have the Raiders first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. They'll bring Renfro in motion right. Sticking to the air with O'Connell here. And that, oh, nearly picked off. 
but would have been a great time for their first interception of the game. Instead, it's second down. Here's O'Connell looking to throw it. O'Connell's throwing for it. And unable to connect. They don't get the two-point conversion here. I know the natural instinct is to kick the extra point there and tie the game. But here in this spot, at this point of the game, is there another coach maybe weighing in with a word what to do here? Well, I think that analytics are starting to say, with it being from the two, that you're going for two more often, that makes sense. But there, I still like going for one, don't you? Yeah, I do. I mean, that's my first instinct, but I'm understanding how the game is starting to change. And we're getting a number of these quarterbacks who are telling their coaches, we should go for two all the time. I want to see if we ever get a team that actually starts to do that. And he takes us just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. That one a broken play, but it ends up being a good play. The scramble goes for 20. Purdy off the play fake. And that's going to be incomplete. From the snap, he suddenly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprised that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. Play action, now Purdy, rolling to his right. And that's off the mark, incomplete. And he still doesn't have a catch, went to the second half. I think it's a little bit of a surprise to me, but that was one he should have caught. Absolutely, that was his best opportunity right there. He dropped it. So now third and ten, they had the big play to start the drive, but two incompletion sets. Throwing here, Purdy. Throw it inside, McCaffrey's got him. And he's going to get this to about the 20, but that is well short of what he needed. That's going to bring up fourth down, only a gain of two there. And his kick here is good. And that will move their lead up to four now. So a nice kick there as they are able to add on to their lead. And that's exactly what you're looking to do. Maneuver yourself into range. That way, if your drive stalls out, you're able to get something out of it. And they do so right there. And the hands team for the Raiders able to secure it. O'Connell looking to throw on first. You shading underneath, bitch. Put your ass over the top. with where they started, so they decided to press their advantage, and it paid off. And he's in. Touchdown, Raiders. DeAndre Carter, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Raiders have moved out in front here in the final minute of the third quarter. And now once again, they'll line up to go for two. And they'll try a little razzle-dazzle. And he'll get into the end zone. So that pushes the lead up to four. And a touchdown apparently not enough. They want more an onside kick. And the 49er hands team does its job.
Yeah, we saw that one up here with CD. Offensive team, they touched that before it went 10 yards. Obviously such a fine line letting it go the required 10 yards, but also getting to it before the hands team can. Just didn't time it out right, and that results in a flag. On first down, it's Purdy. Connects with Kittle underneath. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play, so we will switch in as they fit. Toss. They run wide side with McCaffrey. And he tried to bounce it outside. In case you ain't got it yet, bro, I got a good run defense, bro. You're not, you're not winning running the ball. There's no question that coming into this game, this defense is pretty vocal about his desire to take this running back out of his game. And all that pregame wolfing has turned into results. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Purdy now to throw. Flush to his right. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. That plays a statistic that's going to go on the defensive team stat sheet. Won't necessarily reflect in hours, right? The overall game sheet. But you and I know that they keep count on pressures, hits on quarterbacks, all those things, hoping to increase that throughout the game. And here we are in the fourth quarter. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Max Crosby blowing up the play and getting the sack. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. Will be spotted on the right hash. A 52-yard attempt. And this one is right down Broadway. And that'll bring him back within a point. So with that field goal, this one's now back within a field goal. Maybe not the ultimate result they wanted, but gets them that much closer. This game is unfolding like a really good book, isn't it? Because I feel like there's a few more plot twists yet to be revealed before this one is over. The defensive end ain't got the change of direction or the stamina to keep up with a wide receiver. And the Raiders will add to their fourth quarter lead. So this not a stat line that you'd expect to see two touchdowns for now in the ball game, both coming on the ground. And while it may be unusual, it's obvious they found something that they like on offense that they can use against the defense. GG's. I think they'll continue to go to it until they stop. And he will get into the end zone. It's two points and also a two-score advantage as the lead swells to nine. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Now here comes a return from the middle of the end zone. And he's probably realizing he should have stayed in the end zone as he can only muster a return to the 14-yard line. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. And you figure after giving up that last touchdown, you know, they trail by two scores here in the fourth quarter. This drive becomes very critical. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. McCaffrey running up the middle. And he's able to get up here to the 26. And the offense moving quickly to the line. On first down, Purdy. Woo! Good pick, baby. See that fucking play too much. I wish a motherfucker would. And he did. Don't shade underneath, bitch. You're gonna get torched.
cannot shade against people that know how to attack man. And the Raiders have extended their lead to 15 now here in the fourth. And they'll try a little razzle-dazzle. And he will get into the end zone to bump the lead up to three scores. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And here comes a return from a few steps into the end zone. And he is out of bounds as they'll start up past the 30. The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, and there's some plays they can build on moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. Purdy to throw it on first down. And the Raiders have got it. A loss of three on a sack made by multiple defenders. Purdy now on second down. And pressure coming, and they got it once again. Calling a loss of five, a big sack to bring up third down. Here's Purdy. And he's going to go down again. And now that brings up fourth down there, a loss of six yards on the sack. As expected, they're going forward to keep the drive alive. Try for Ayuk, but it's intercepted. And the Raiders are going to take over at their own 41. Well, it wasn't always pretty, but the interception there, and that means that they should get out of here with a victory. Yeah, this is not a game that they're going to preserve for posterity on defense, but they did finish it off, didn't they? Why do you keep shading? Oh, my God. They'll take that one and head to the locker room. So it's a touchdown. Downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. Here now is second and ten again from the 41. That one looks like he'll throw here. Open man is Myers. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. A first down there, a pick up of 25. Now O'Connor. The, the laser show. And they eventually get to him at the 17 after a pick up of 17. Into the red zone, first down. Looking to throw yet again. And it's caught over the middle. Hooper. The Raiders going to use one of their timeouts. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Second and three from the nine. Here's Carter. And he is in. Touchdown, Raiders. DeAndre Carter. A nine-yard touchdown run as his guys are able to push that lead out a bit further. Now the Raider offense will stay out there as they'll line up to go for two. They'll try to run it with Jacobs, and he is into the end zone to bump the lead up two more. First, I'd rather see him kick the extra point there than to go for two, but it almost feels like there's a story within the story here. I mean, this is in college. You know, size and victory, that matters in those games. Here, all you have to do is win by one point. That's all that you need. Instead, they go for it, get two. You got some pretty ticked off folks on the other sideline now. The 
49er offense set to get this drive underway. Well, CD, it's all window dressing at this point. I mean, the best they can do is end the game with a nice drive to maybe build some momentum to move forward at this point. Get a touchdown here, give yourself some positive momentum and reps. The focus on when you get back to practice in the next couple of days. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now Purdy. And down he goes. Brought down a Raiders sack. Now San Francisco are going to call their second timeout as they stop it with 14 seconds to go in the game. Coming up now on a second and 15 following that sack. Purdy now to throw off the play action. Under pressure, they got him again. Yeah, so it's too damn hard. So they'll stop the clock here in a game that's been decided in the closing seconds. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Open man is Juwan Jennings. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. 14 yards is the pickup there, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. That's certainly playing down a distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. Purdy, big fourth down play. And it's going to be batted down. And we'll go the other way with the football. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Raider D, they get the football back. The offense for Las Vegas about set to begin the drive. First down throw, O'Connell. Sideline throw, it's complete. Look at that 371 yard pass and ball like it wasn't nothing. So this one a victory for the Las Vegas Raiders. And we talked so much about the turnover battle. Who wins, who loses this game, no exception. Air free football, no turnovers at all. You were confused on me at first. Like I wasn't expecting someone to sit there and shade underneath. So I, at first I did, you know, it took me a while to adjust to it. I was like, oh, okay, you're going to keep doing it. And then I just started cooking them, bro. Look at that. I got good run defense, bro. Old McCaffrey on 10 attempts, and he can't even get 30. Barely. Adam. That boy had 13 tackles with four sacks with that silver shoot. That silver shoot got down. <laughs> I found a way to, to run that to stop that tight end corner out with a bracket coverage. So I started, ended up doing that. Uh, four. You got a lot of sacks. One, two, two picks. Might have to start running it with auto flip off because I was trying to flip the play and then sometimes it just like it didn't line up because he he hot routed or something and it, it prevented my guy from lining up where he was going to when I flipped the play. So I just ended up just turning auto flip off and flipping it myself. You have to do that on cover zero plays because um, most of the time they just they don't match up correctly. Um, it's kind of slowed down. Obviously, run defense on point. That's that silver shoe pinch coming. I see how, see how I flipped it. it. It got there late. But the reason why you want it flipped is because you want that linebacker blitzing to shoot that gap that he's going to run through. I think that's where I started catching him, shading too much. See, like his first step, that gave his shade away. See how he came close? When he stepped forward to my receiver, that makes it, that makes it easier for me to throw it faster against man coverage. Instead of me having to wait, you already pushed him forward two yards, so that's like a, a little bit less time that I need to throw it, regardless how good your D line is, because now you shade it underneath. This is the situation I'm telling you. This is the only time that you guys are going to you know lead over the top, because if you don't. If, you, if there's a defender over the top and you lead over the top, usually it'll be an overthrow. But in this situation right here, I get a nice click on, get out in front of it. Obviously, if he was a faster receiver, he probably would have been in there for a touchdown on that play. But 
Caught him playing a lot of cover one. Remember, I showed you all the two out routes. This one, I kind of improvised. I think he went cover nine right here. So what I did to attack it is I went smoke screen, kept the option, wheel route, in route, and then I just left him on the, uh, the fade on the other side. So if I waited, I potentially could have had the option route, but he shed it a little bit because I stepped to the left. But you can see right there that wheel route just whew, sneak wide open. I was killing him with his defense, bro. I kept flipping it. And it should have just came screaming. It's the main thing. You want to make sure that you're blitzing the gap if it's a run. And then this guy is not even going to get picked up, bro. Like, running backs don't block very good unless you ID the mic one. Like, if you don't, the running back is going to be looking to the right side because that's where the blitz is really coming from. He's just an extra, extra blitz defender. So a running back's not even looking. He goes to pick up the mic. He doesn't take on the slot. So that's why I like that. Like I said, that's why I kept flipping the plate. I think he had the one where he went with the out route. So I started making an adjustment for it. For it, I couldn't get the click on it fast enough for that. One. It just kept going over there to the flat, so I think eventually I started putting a soft squad over there in the second half. Let's see if I can find the highlight with it. All right, so this was uh, I'm playing cover four. Um, the situation with the out routes, they have what's up, Jake? The situation with the out routes against cover four is the next thing they're going to do is run a slant. And that slant's going to be easy 20, 30 yards, especially if they're not sending enough pressure. You're rushing two guys, and you want to be the third guy rushing off over here. Right, this is a pass rusher, bro. He need to be rushing. If you're going to rush two guys. All I got to do is sit here and wait. After these guys, they, they, they're going to go into their transitional route. He's going to run a slant. Okay, so once he hits that spot, all you got to do is wait. You know both of those out routes are going to run like something to the inside. So he runs a drag on the right, and then he runs like a post slant over there. I guess it really depends on where you're at with the ball, but they both kind of come inside for you to get downfield. Dun -dun. Caught him in cover three. You already know money right here. Kill cover three with that play all day. Probably there's none more highlights. Caught him in cover zero again. Um, sometimes you have to improvise. Um, I kept the slant bird on one side just in case he decided to stop shading. I thought he would have stopped, but see, he kept shading. See how they all stepped forward? At first, I thought he was like run committing, but I was like, if you were run committing, that would have been wide open. But like I said, I eventually caught on to it. He was shading underneath every time he played man. And you see how I get over the top? Like, both the receivers wide open. You just float that bitch. I'm going to keep shading. Uh, this was quarters. I played with a hard flat. Um, usually tight sets do not leave the quarter match on the field. You need to take the quarter match off, but don't shade your defense. Because if you shade your defense, you cancel your match. Just take the quarter flat linebacker, put them in a hard flat. Everything else matches. And then you play two to one on the slot. And like I said, having that hard flat over there prevents him from running that drag. And then everything, like I said, everything else matches up. Accordingly, without being canceled out. I think I caught his ass again. You see people run this formation enough. You already know he's going to run like a corner and a, and a little pivot route. Um, so all I got to do is jam the corner and come down and play the pivot. So I stood in front of it, seen the pivot, had over-the-top help on the corner, see how they bracket. And then I bracket down on this route. Pocket kind of collapses a little bit. Everything's bracketed up. 
almost like a trap defense. Because like I said, anytime I play that quarters, I'm going to put a hard play. The quarter flat playing inside the box is not necessarily going to play a very good match zone. So like I said, you're either going to put them in a curl, a hook, or a, a hard flat. Linebackers don't play those quarter flats very well. So like I said, just played straight to the hard flat, got bracket coverage off. That way he's just not sitting there getting in the way. And I just get you know, I'm running with the fucking bench pivot route that he thought he was going to have. And it just so happened to be my defensive lineman was right there. So trying to find the one where he threw the pick to Hobbs. Again, this is where I flipped the play. See how it just comes screaming, even with a block running back. I'll tell you the zone assignments that I got. It's going to be match quarter. So if he runs a dig route, he's going to he's going to match with him. He didn't run. A, he didn't run a dig, but I know match quarter. If he runs a dig, that quarter is gonna he's gonna he gonna follow with him. Um, I put a vert hook right here. Main reason for it, he'll match up vertically with his guy. But the thing with the vert hook is sometimes I deal with people that take this number three and run a corner route. Well, if you have a good jumper right here, and they try to throw that corner route, that vert hook's gonna intercept it. You know, so it, it has multiple purposes. It'll match man-to-man -man vertical, but also if you try to cross anything underneath or over with like a corner out from the number three, he's going to be sitting right there waiting for it. So that's that's why I run that one right there. And besides, a seam flat is almost pointless if I'm not threatened to the flat. So to put him a vertical match, then I put an inside quarter, regardless which safety you put in it, Inside quarter as a match user adjustment will always play the number three. It doesn't matter if it's this safety or if it's this safety, they're going to defend this guy. So don't you put an inside quarter over top of this guy and expect him to cover this guy. Now what you could do is you can go soft squat inside quarter and then you could probably overload blitz with this guy if you want. If you feel like you can kind of hold him off with your user enough to pass them over to an inside quarter. There's different ways that I could teach you how to play match zones to kind of, you know, confuse your opponents a little bit. But remember, inside quarter, regardless, will always play the number three, regardless if he's meshing, if he's running some pivot, crosser, flat, don't matter. Inside quarter is going to take the number three. All right. Um, but other than that, you can see right there, the inside quarter follows with him. I have this tight end manned up, and then I'm kind of playing down underneath so he doesn't have that quick pass. And obviously I'm sending the blitz with it. I'm trying to find the one where I had Hobbs in the soft squat. Most of these I'm just I'm screaming against a block running back. There's nothing he can do. Match zones are right there. So he doesn't run a dig right here. He runs an in route. So the in, the outside quarter is going to take the number two corner. Right? That's why I like these match zones. So he's going to run a corner route or a deep end route. See how he breaks on the ball and he gets out in front of it. If he would have went vertical, he would have got that. Like I said, I sent a blitz with it against a block running back. It's just untouched. I can't remember which one, which defense this was. All right, so this is where the situation where I I was trying to flip the play, and it wasn't doing what it was supposed to do. So I ended up having two of my DBs on, on his slot So because it wasn't matching up the way I wanted to when I tried to flip it. I guess he was, like, audibling it or something. I'm not sure. And eventually I had to change up and just started running my stuff, running my defense with uh, me user flipping it from the start. Now, hopefully there's a highlight of it. Cover three beater. See how the shades are different when you're on the uh, the left hash? See, it's inside shade to the boundary, and it's outside shade to the field. So just kind of pay attention to that. That's going to help you with any, any type of way that you want to pass lead. Obviously, if you see right there, the dig route would have been a viable read as well 
if I would have decided to go to it. You know, you can see the zig route pulls the hook curl and the flat. If I wait on it enough, I'll have that dig route wide open across the middle of the field to safe reading. Started getting a bunch of sacks right here. All right, so this is the one where I have the soft squat and the safety in man. So it's kind of bracketed off. Just kept the outside quarter and the vert hook right there. They got underneath on the levels concept. And still, even even when me not sending that other corner, that linebacker just just keeps shooting through that gap. I think I kept getting on with it. We got like four sacks off that one play. Right there. He would have got another sack right there. Had I not sent, had he not got blocked on the play action, so the second guy comes through on that one. And there's no highlight for the one where he got the pick. But it is what it is. Oh, good game, Aiden. Let me fix on the drink while it loads back up. And I hope I'm helping some of you guys today. I know it's been a while since I've given some tip videos, but we're going to start diving into that going into the next Madden season. All right, we can help y'all out. So next Madden will be more competitive. Man, still ain't loaded up yet. Got me a baseball field in my backyard, fellas. <laughs> Y'all think I'm I'm dead serious. Y'all don't believe me. I put, I put pictures up on my community post. I'm going to be playing there this summer. Playing outside. Give me a bat. Hit, hit a couple of balls. Been a while since I just did stuff for myself. Why they make you lose connection just because you want to look at some highlights. But whatever. Let's get into it.
What up, Brody? The NFL is on EA Sports, and we are in Silicon Valley. What are you talking about, season two? I'm not doing another season in CFL, bro. Like, once the Super Bowl is over, that's it. I might do, like, a small CFL, like a few years or two. But 32 man is just pointless. Can't keep anybody long enough. Nobody wants to quit. personnel Shit like that. No look recoveries, no look catches, no look throws. Take the fucking no look shit out of the fucking game. Bring the sense of realism to the game. Thank you. 
and a nice game. Really, really, we shouldn't be surprised, should we? That's what runners do, especially the best ones. They break tackles and gain extra yardage. Play action, and now here's Purdy to throw it. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35 yard line. Max Crosby collapses the pocket and drops him for a loss of three. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Purdy. This will be caught at Samuel. And he'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. The Niners passing game in sync now. They've got another first down. Back to throw. Burning. That is going to go down. Back at the 27 yard line. He's sacked. The pressure for multiple guys there as they bury him for a big nine yard loss. Purdy will set up the throw here. here. Try for all you points intercepted. And the Raiders will take over here at right their own 14 yard line. But when I looked down, he was kind of shaking his head right after he threew that pass. So, what did you see? From a defense's perspective, anytime you have your eyes back towards the quarterback, you're in a position to make a play on the ball, whether it's a big time play by you or an overthrow by the quarterback. You have a much better opportunity. On first and ten, it's O'Connell. Ah, I went the wrong way with it. And his throws will be incomplete. It certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. Here's O'Connell again on second and ten. We got to be on the The lessons will continue. This rookie, he's got to learn how to read situations just a little bit better. That ball behind the line, he's got to find a way to get rid of the football and not take the sack, whether it's with his legs or just throwing it away. Over the middle, complain. It's Jacobs. And they'll hustle up to stop him well shy of the first, right around the 15. They get 13, but it's not nearly enough. And it'll be fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down? And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. A curious decision to go for it, but it pays off for the first down. Back to throw, O'Connell. Back to run throw again, complete. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. From the 44-yard line, here's second down and one. Here's O'Connell. He's going to find and complete it to run throw. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers 30. Stay in that dime, bro. After the catch makes it good for a gain of 26 and also a first down. Once again, O'Connell back to throw. He'll get this underneath the Jacobs. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Back to back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Here's O'Connell looking to throw it. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. It's always tough trying to keep your guy upright when he's trying to throw the football. When you're dealing with those big bad guys on the defensive front, it's even tougher. And this time, those guys on the opposite side won the battle, getting to the quarterback and knocking him into an incompletion. In motion is Austin Hooper. Back to the air on second down. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And the Raiders are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. Boy, this is a well orchestrated drive they've put together. You think back to how far they were backed up to start things out? 
and they've gone on a march since then. And now after that completion there, they've got a first and goal. Jacobs will take this one in for a Vegas touchdown. Better match personnel, dummy. Get out of that dime. I have a field day on that shit. And the Raider offense will stay out there as they'll line up to go for two. O'Connell's throwing for it. Put your heels on the goal line at worst. for me anyway because I need to get three minutes with the ball to score again before I have to get ball at that time. And that one makes it 14 He's not going to match up personnel, so I ain't got nothing to worry about about his defense. So now the other return team's out there is he'll try to duplicate what they just saw. From his end zone, here comes Carter. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Crossing about five yards as he's tackled at the two. The Las Vegas offense ready to start this next drive. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of good waiting for us. Remember the offense scored a touchdown. Last time out looking to repeat that, Charles's defense, they were pretty frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just about the wills in a lot of ways because they you know, both motivated, they both game plan for this I'm about to say. specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. They'll try again for the 20 on second and 10. Now we'll come. Well, Quinn had a faster release. to give you a huge shout out appreciate you baseline and bro making this game super easy for me Keep trying to put the pedal to the metal here. They're going to try an onside kick. 
The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they talk it over, we step aside. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. But no run back here. A fair catch, and this will come out to the 25. The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. But not an ideal way to end their previous drive. They threw the interception, Charles, after they had built up some momentum and moving the football. But something to at least build on for this offense as they run back out here. Yeah, you're right about that. Up until that last play, everything was working pretty well for this offense. Gaining chunks of yardage, getting first down, really making a push for the end zone. It looked like they had a nice rhythm going. Now you got to have a short memory here. Don't focus on the interception. Focus on what came before it and get back to it. So the incompletion, and now it's second and ten again from the 25-yard line. Out of the gun, Purdy. That's complete. It's Brandon Allen. And takes this to the other side of the field before going out of bounds. 27 yards there, first down. I'm just showing from verticals. Either side of the ball, but I think this kind of makes this an important drive. You'd love to get this back to a one-score game if you can, and that's good work there to get some yardage here and pick up the first down. There's Purdy on first and ten. You must alert that. Succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. A quick throw completed by Purdy. And he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. Back at the five yard line now, second and goal. From the shotgun to McCaffrey. And this play does it. He's going to be marked down behind the line after the dive. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. Now Purdy. So why are you not playing the ball, bro? Right there, bro. No. You have your eyes there looking like you bought a goddamn ticket. And then stop tracking. Bouncing back nicely from that bad opening drive where he threw the interception. Drive number two leads him right down the field and into the end zone. So obviously his confidence was never lost, and that's a good thing to see. Great quality to have. You absolutely must maintain that as a quarterback. You want to see um, Brody go to the beginning of the video. Just a second drive. Beginning of the stream. You'll see. From his end zone, here comes Carter. And not a good return here at all. He's able to force to start at the 12 yard line. Baseline for me, please, so I can score fast. The Raider offense set to get this drive started. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead. But a mistake there, that can change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. The open man here, Renfro. The Raiders going to use one of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. From the 34 now, here's first and 10.
Renfro, the motion man. O'Connell looking to throw on first. Oh. To the side. He was so wide open. <laughs> I got too excited about it. Pick on the next one, bro. When I feel like I got cheated, I always get the goddamn pick on the next play. P.I. Good catch. Could have been P.I. Should have. Now I got to start throwing flags. guys one-on-one -on -one downfield, bro. I'm telling you, you're going to get hit. So we've hit intermission. It's halftime. This is the NFL, and it's a presentation of EA Sports. Welcome back, Charles. Master of that shit. Booth ready for quarter number three. And how about this right out of the locker room? An onside kick attempt. And the 49er hands team does its job. A gutsy call there. Yeah, he's at the locker room with a lead. Try to get onside kick. It didn't work. And you just wonder what the game was there. They're already in the lead. They were in control of the game. They may have given momentum now. To their opponent and maybe kick-started things going in the opposite direction. Starting the second half with a run by McCaffrey. 
Right, he's able to climb out about six there, down to 37. Hey, it's not the most spectacular play, but I think most teams will take that every single time for the first play of a drive. Begin the series with positive yardage and set yourself up for a very manageable second down. They stay on the ground, McCaffrey again. Yeah, your own dude helped me tackle him. <laughs> From the 32 now, here's first and 10. And they'll send the slot in motion left. They'll get it here in the jet sweep. Play run fits, bitch. They need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you're all out of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. And he's going to be close to a first down as he gets this to the Raiders 24. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. You really thought you were going to hit me with a RPO swing route? He is very close to a first you really thought that was going to work? He's going to be a foot or so short. But was it a big strike? Box of RPOs over here, bro. Really great range. What do we have now? Fourth and inches? Yeah, it's not more than a half a foot. You know what I would do here. You would always go for it. <laughs> I'm one of those guys. Good serve. This will depend on the mark. I'm not sure he pushed the line forward. And indeed he did not. They stopped him. Kyle Shanahan, an offensive line, but his guys stopped up short. You can tell somebody's mad in IQ if they actually try to fucking run QB sneak in this game. <laughs> fucking bomb play. Defense for Las Vegas about set to begin the drive. Don't shade underneath. Don't shade underneath. You gonna get cooked. Don't shade on me, bro. Don't shade. Man, you killing yourself base aligning, bro. Thou shall never base align against a vet. In motion is Austin Hooper. Throwing on first down, O'Connell. Have a field day on base line, I'll be. So given five yards there on the pitch and catch, and it'll be second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow oh able to his way oh. open and catch the ball. Here's O'Connell. Oh, looking deep for Adams. I don't need it too much, Connor. I don't need it too much. Set it up. Fuck. Oh, dude, it's cool. Stop playing man on me, bro. Like, I don't have Devontae Adams. So on third and medium, they dial up the pass, and it works to end the end zone. And it's really not a surprise to me. That's a throwing down in the NFL because of how tough it is to run the football. Safety not fast enough. Ain't got to change his direction. Why is you bringing him down? And throw out of those. In this case, it took a nice shot at the end zone and made it pay off. On is the Raider kickoff unit now as they will send this one away. This is going to be returned from the middle of the end zone. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30, up to the 33. to get this drive underway. And on the last drive, they were in field goal range. They just opted not to kick it, didn't get it. How does that change the mentality this goal? I don't 
don't think it changes much for the hit rate because this is what he preaches all the time. Attack at all times in any spot on the field. And he likes touchdowns, not field goals. Now, your field goal kicker, you got to make sure you nurse him through and say, okay, don't worry about it. When we need you, you've got to be ready to go. And the team, of course, loves to see points on the board. So let's see if it changes a little bit if they're in the same spot again. Let's see what the decision is here if they get to that spot. Max Crosby picks up his second sack of the afternoon. That's the second sack of the game. The best defensive end, they do their homework as much as offensive guys do. They know how to beat the offensive lineman across from them. What moves they need to do to set them up. This guy's been pretty good at it all game long. Back now here against Santa Clara. It's 49er football, but some ground to cover. They find themselves behind as we hit the fourth and final quarter. So now 20 yards to go on second down after the sack. Work to be done. Back to throw, Purdy. Give me that. And he's going to be intercepted for the third time thus far. And the Raiders are going to take over at their own 30-yard line. And that pretty much I dare you to face the line. Because this defense, they seem to be one step ahead from the start of the game until now. And you identified it perfectly, and we can see the frustration is settling in now, and it's probably been there for a long time, but now it's evident because you can see it in their faces, you can see it in their body language, maybe even a little bit in that play call that ended up maybe closing them out. First down throw, O'Connell. The throw here right side of the falls incomplete. Great coverage there all around, really didn't have any options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. Here's O'Connell again on second and ten. It's caught here by Adams. Thanks for baseline. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. From the shotgun, O'Connell. Thanks for baselining. Two bad catches for Devontae Adams. And that will wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Baseline again for me, please. Catch and run pays off for 29 yards. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. In motion is Austin Hooper. Once again, O'Connell back to throw. That's caught left side, Myers with it. Call the gate of three on the play, and that'll bring up second down. And they'll bring the big tight end across the formation left. Back to throw, O'Connell. It's Myers again with another catch. That Making this too easy, bro. Put him over 100 yards receiving for the game. Yes, he will. And he's got a first down to boot. And looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. Second and goal from the one. In motion left goes Carter. Jenkins again. And I don't think he got in. He did not. They mark him short of the goal line. They hold him again. And now all of a sudden it's third and goal at the one. A lot of tired bodies on that field. But this is a big play. Third and goal. O'Connell's going to sneak it. And boy, a good surge defensively. It'll depend on the mark, but I'm not sure he got there. Only a few inches needed on the sneak. He didn't get it, and now it's fourth down. O'Connell's going to sneak it. <laughs> That's why you got to match personnel, dummy. <laughs> 
The sneak successful from a yard out. And the Raiders have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. Now the Raider offense will stay out there as they'll Can't stay in dollar the whole game, bro. Jesus fucking Christ. And they'll try a little razzle dance. You can get pancaked. Just like that. I'm going to play defense. On is the Raider kickoff unit now as they will send this one away. And this will be brought out from the middle of the end zone. And this return will net positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27 yard line. The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one's pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. Yeah, absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use his motivation for the rest of the time. That and his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Ja'Cory and Bennett has it. And the Raiders are going to take over here. Yeah, matching personnel gets me turnovers. Nice play defensively by the rookie coming up with the INT. And that's a late round pick right there, making a first round. Still interview. don't want to match personnel. Three corners. They end up winding up on special teams and sub packages, and even on the practice squad. But he's really made an impact on this defense, and he comes up with the interception there. He's across midfield, and he gets it to the other side of midfield. Look at look at that, bro! Like 500 passing yards, man. Learn how to match up. Bro, pull the plug. <laughs> hey, you see a thing saying they conceded. Should be my last two. Yeah. Hey, we beating some incredible teams, man. Cowboys, 49ers, bet to bet. I think I got this shit down pat now. It's going to be a problem moving forward. Assuming some of these things still stay the same going into next year. I'm not asking for everything to stay the same, but I just don't want the game to change over too much from year to year. Especially with the free form, man. I done got that shit mastered. That shit just needs the to be coverage of the national default from now on. on the air. Today, boy, what a matchup. Two NFL franchises with so much history, so much tradition, getting set to do battle here. As it will be the Dallas Cowboys taking on the Las Vegas Raiders. Oh, and how about this? An onside kick to start the game. Take it up the gun. Oh, no, no. 
And a very determined run there as he'll take this all the way down to the 27. Good effort. 11 yards there on the first play from scrimmage. Good sign here early. Everybody on offense there up front in the backfield in sync on that play. So much talk about what do you do to neutralize home field advantage? Well, teams that run the football effectively, they often have a way of neutralizing it in a big way when they have those types of runs. First down, it's Pollard again. And he'll get this one down about the 27. Still nine yards to go on second down from the 27. Here's Prescott. Swing this out for Pollard. Touchdown, Cowboys! Tony Pollard, 27 yards. And the Cowboys are on the board first here in Vegas. Getting your back involved, what's the importance there in the passing game? Well, oftentimes you can create mismatches because who's going to cover him? And you get him into space, which is where he likes to operate with the ball in his hands. Oftentimes makes people miss, gets that run after the catch, and off he goes. And into the end zone. Aubrey good with a PAT. And it's now a 7-0 game. So after the touchdown, Aubrey now to kick this one away. DeAndre Carter now from his end zone. And the decision to bring it out, not a good one, as he's tackled it to 15. is Austin Hooper. O'Connell working for the gun. Caught out right by Renfro. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so our offense has to be ready each and every time to either equal or try and get us ahead and try and keep us ahead. This is their chance to respond to that first touchdown given up. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before it's taken down. A gain of 22. And the tight end goes in motion left. Now the offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. In motion is Austin Hooper. Here's O'Connell looking to throw it. Open man is Myers. Hook up at 15 yards there. And now leave it with a second and just a few inches left. Now they'll audible to something else. Sticking to the air with O'Connell here. Ah, oh, come on, you can't underthrow that. Why well, I can't wait till we get a new quarterback. That shit was wide open, too. And he takes this one back into the end zone. It happens. Cowboy defense has a touchdown. I guess I got a freak for him, that. 
Well, we went from scoreless to 13 nothing in a hurry. First, their offense had the touchdown, and now the defense comes through. He was dead ass going to be wide open. One two punch in that ball, but touchdown quarterback. The stupid throws. They keep that effort up. You'll take the other sideline out of this one very quickly. An extra point up and good by Aubrey. And that'll make the score 14 to 0. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. From his end zone, here comes Carter. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Las Vegas offense ready to start this next drive. They've been outplayed early, no question. Down 14 nothing already as they come up first and 10. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. I'm not sure that you would call the trick play, but they definitely showed some imagination there. I wouldn't be surprised if they want to come back and show this play a few more times before this one is over. First carry for Josh Jacobs. And he stopped the nice hotel blocks. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Maybe I'm wrong, but it looked like even if he had opted to keep that, I don't think there was going to be much to gain. Seemed like it was perfectly defense. You know what they say? Those guys on the other side, they get paid too. Now it's O'Connell. He's got his target. That's complete. And he takes his beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Thanks for pressing. What you got to say about a bill? Press again for me, please. Thank you. As they've got it with a first and 10. To throw here, O'Connell. And he's got his big Press me again, please. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Thank you. So Cowboy territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 46. First and 10 at the 46 yard line. Now O'Connell. O'Connell. The throw is in the corner. But it's incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. Throwing on second down. Here's O'Connell. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Myers. That'll leave him with Press a me again, please. Two coming up. They got eight yards there. You don't want to press me now? Thank you. Throw it, O'Connell. Mm -hmm. so. Actually, dumb to press a third if he's not going to match up. Third quarter, they're not going to blow match personnel. It's pointless to press. And both knew exactly where the first down markers were. You know the defense is trying to guard those sticks and try to keep people in front, but somehow, some way, those guys found a way to pick it up. Throw left side complete. That's Myers. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. They've got another first down. The Raider passing game clicking on all cylinders right now. O'Connell looking to throw yet again. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. He'll get just a yard on the scramble in second down. A 
First run for the backup, Abdullah. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard, so it's back to third and ten. Two minutes to play, first half, it's 14 to nothing. Here's third and ten. They'll bring Renfro in motion right. O'Connell from the gun on third down. That's to the right sideline, and it falls incomplete. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all, and I understand why. They look lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. Is that what you would do? Believe not, sir. The offense staying out there. They look prepared to go here on fourth and ten. In motion is Austin Hooper. They'll go for it. O'Connell. Man, Told you about pressing me. Devontae Keep acting like I don't got Devontae. An 18 yard touchdown grab. And the Raiders' decision to go for it pays off with six points. Now the Raider offense will stay out there as they'll line up to go for two. They're going to keep it on the ground. And he will get into the end zone. And a two point conversion will cut this down to a six point game. Second quarter onside kick there that failed. Is that something that maybe they had dialed up before this game started? It feels like it, doesn't it? That they thought they had the right situation, you know, and, and the right approach and going after it. Also may signal that they feel like they have the superior team, that they can try these sorts of things, and it won't come back and hurt them later. A first down throw for Prescott. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. The good signal calls are never go back and out and play the blame game because they need those guys to protect him. But on that last one, his offensive line, they lost their leverage very quickly, and that's why they're able to get to him and hit him as he tried to throw the football and force an incompletion. Second down, it's Pollard. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Now they need to get this to the 38. That's where the first down marker is here on third. Now Prescott. Look in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. Touchdown, Cowboys! Two first-half touchdown passes now for Dak Prescott. And the Cowboys are able to add on to that lead. I know these wide receivers are about flash and dash and high-flying plays, but a good number of them played running back at some point in their career, and that's how they finish off a lot of their big plays, run after the catch. And this time he finishes off the big play in the end zone. Aubrey now for the PAT. He knocks it through, and he extends the lead to 21-8. So after the touchdown, Aubrey now to kick this one away. From his end zone, here comes Carter. And not a good return here at all as he'll be forced to start at the 12-yard line. The Raider offense set to get this drive started. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. Oh, and 
his early struggles continue. Here's another one intercepted. Hey, you know me, Kato. First read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, got to give him credit, found the perfect play call. Quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free, and his guy made a nice catch. Just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game. So after the touchdown, Aubrey now to kick this one away. This taken in at the goal line. Breaks through the contact. And he will make it back to the 15, and that's it. Good coverage there by the kick team. The offense for Las Vegas about set to begin the drive. And with a three-score deficit staring him in the face, they might have to press the issue here and try to get points out of this drive. And it's complete to Adams. Now the Raiders are going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. First down throw, O'Connell. And that one too wide and incomplete. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They were starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Now a second and ten. And once again, O'Connell back to throw. He hits Adams complete. Now the Raiders going to burn their third and final timeout as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. O'Connell looking to throw on first. And this is caught. Touchdown, Raiders. Devontae Adams. As the first half is winding down. And the Raiders are able to cut into this lead in the final seconds of the first half. Now the Raider offense will stay out there as they'll line up to go for two. And they'll try a little razzle-dazzle. 
And he is going to get in there for the two points to make this a 12 point game. So two successful two point tries now for them. And you know what it does? It gives you a boost, a huge one for your team because, hey, you're dominating them now. They can't stop you either scoring touchdowns or two point conversions. But how about the defense? You don't know what to do at this stage. You can't stop them in any direction. And he's only going to make it to the 13 yard line and no further. The Dallas offense here set to begin the drive. And with eight seconds on the clock, really not a lot of time to try to put anything together. Off the play fake, Prescott. This is caught, it's Cox. Oh, he sheds himself free. Boy, he ain't love cheating. <laughs> he love cheating. for the end of the second quarter. This is the NFL and it's on EA Sports. Welcome back, halftime over. We are ready for quarter number three alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. The Raiders are going to have it first, and they trail here as we get back to it in this third quarter of action. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. The Las Vegas offense ready to start this next drive. This offense, Charles, had a strong first half throwing the football. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off by Stephon Gilmore. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Cowboy defense has a touchdown. And Charles, for this offense, those interception woes they kind of had in the first half have now followed them into the second half. And for this defense, they take advantage, turn that into a pick six. And that defense is in a spot now where they're thinking about ways to close this game out. And as confidently as they've been playing, I expect them to do exactly that. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. From his end zone, here comes Carter. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. The Raider offense set to get this drive started. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. From all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. Here's O'Connell. And he will go down. A Cowboy sack. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. Yeah, you lost. Back to throw, O'Connell. Throw out wide is incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. And O'Connell now to throw. Why are they giving a long throw animation there? Why? Looks like another empty possession offensively. And you're at that point in the game where you can't afford too many more of these. So this is going to require some heavy thinking on the sideline to figure out what they can do to crack this defense. Still just the third quarter, but they've got to make something happen. I think they know that. They're going for it on fourth. They're indeed going for it as they look to throw. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. 
So after the big play on fourth, here's first and ten. To the air again with O'Connell. On the out route, this is Adams with a catch. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. On first and ten, it's O'Connell. And he's got Renfro in the end zone. Touchdown, Raiders. 23 yards for the touchdown. And the Raiders are able to cut into that deficit. And remember, partner, that's a rookie quarterback back there. Apparently, he's getting the hang of his NFL thing pretty quickly. And three touchdown passes. You're right, he looks comfortable. What are they doing, anything in particular? Well, they keep talking about making sure they're giving him plays that fit his talents and also maybe shrinking the playbook a little bit. They did tell us that. Bottom line, he's really good. And the Cowboys are able to recover. Prescott on first down. Swinging this out for Pollard. So the completion good for six yards, and it's second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here, and what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. And he's going to get this down near the 20 yard line. Vegas. Welcome back, everybody. It's the Cowboys with the football. They'll be looking to tack on to their lead as we get set for the fourth. First down, Prescott. He finds his man complete. It's Ferguson. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that will bring up second down. That's a staple of this offense, drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. They run straight ahead here with Pollard. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive, and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short game. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally, because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. Touchdown. Where is my knockout? Dak Prescott now four touchdown passes on the afternoon, and the Cowboys have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. 
Well, he has been fun to watch throwing the football in this one. It's certainly not fun for that defense, though, Charles. Now up to four touchdown passes in this ball game. Yeah, we're supposed to be neutral, but I'm feeling their pain right now because he has absolutely carved up the secondary. A clinic on how to attack a defense and take them out of the game. So after the touchdown, Aubrey now to kick this one away. From his end zone, here comes Carter. And they're going to start in a hole as he's brought down at the 11th. In this position, trying to get back into the game, teams are looking for a spark from their special teams. That's not what they got, though. They got a setback, and they have a long field to cover if they want to try and put points on the board. The offense for Las Vegas about set to begin the drive. A good start to the drive here. That's caught out on the left side. And he'll be out of bounds near the 30. In fact, right on the 30. So first and 10 now from the 30. First and 10 at the 30 yard line. Now it's O'Connell. Over the middle, that's caught by Adams. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Back to back good plays have him on the move on first down. Not liking the look, they'll change the play. And yeah, they'll send the tight end in motion left. Throwing on first down, O'Connell. That one into the hands of Adams downfield. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. O'Connell on first and ten. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time. Yeah. Picked off by Trayvon Diggs. Should have called for P.I. on it. And he takes it. this one back into the end zone. And the Cowboy defense has a touchdown. Well, that's what you get, apparently, when you try to take on a Pro Bowl cornerback. I and mean, what a play there to make the interception and also bring it back for six. And he is so good that we've seen teams absolutely stay away from throwing the ball at him. Here, he's just reading the quarterback's eyes the entire way, makes a great play on the football, and turns it into six. Taken at the goal line. And they're going to start in a hole as he's brought down at the 11. In this position, trying to get back into the game, teams are looking for a spark from their special teams. That's not what they got, though. They got a setback, and they have a long field to cover. They want to try and put points on the board. In motion is Austin Hooper. Throwing after the interception, O'Connell. And oh my goodness, here's a fifth interception. Picked up by Joe. Oh, oh man, oh man, I'm talking you, bro. Back to the nine yard line. Well, it's not too much. I mean, on one side, five. In Cannot let people get momentum, bro. You see how it fucking helps them, lets them jump routes, even though they're behind. Just when one thing I wish they would they take out, out of this game, bro. Like, I feel like they'd be adding too much. Sometimes. Uh, I need something to drink.
All right, fellas, I'm going to uh, take a breather. Um, I'm sorry, I missed your message. Hold up. I didn't just go live. I've been on, how long have I been on it? Hold up. I played a couple of games. I mean, I, I gotta take breathers every now and then, bro. Like, my, my ability to play depends on satisfying this. Like, if I'm, if I'm hungry, bro, I, I kind of be out of my element. Hold up. Most doubt. But um, if you want, yeah, man. Hey, if y'all want to see at the beginning of the video, at the beginning of the stream, I kind of show coverage beaters for every coverage um, that's available. So if y'all want to go back and look at that, definitely go check it out. Um, if y'all need a session, like if there's anything that y'all want to master, if y'all need a session, bro, I I do ten dollar sessions for an hour. Um, so if y'all want an hour of my time and y'all want to actually learn some stuff that can elevate your game, um, the Raiders are my team. Um, but like I said, if y'all want to elevate your game, I do ten dollar sessions. Um, I don't know if there's a way you can do like for Xbox or anything, but. If you're on PS5, definitely I can pull up a share play and, and give you a private session um, and try to help you with a couple of things. Obviously, there's there's some parts of my games that it's a little challenging, like the free forming and stuff, but I can kind of put you in situations. Instead of just playing a game with you, I'll go into a practice mode session with you and let you get live reps against a good user, you know? That way you can kind of get better at mastering the the timing and the muscle memory that's required to to hit some of the passes that you're able to hit. You know, um, there's different types of free forms. I'll kind of just go back over it real quick. Just kind of do a review. Like there's free former on press, and then there's free form on off coverage. Freeform on press is going to be over the top quickly. Freeform off coverage is going to be pulled back. So, I'll give you a good example. You just got to kind of pay attention to it. Let me show you what you're looking for. And you don't need speed to beat press, bro. Like if, you, if you know what you're doing with these option routes, then you can be you can be hell on somebody. All right, so on press, all I want to do is just do me out of the thing. What you're going to be waiting for is you're going to wait for the bump mechanic. All right, so once he chucks, he's going to be long. All right, and when he's in that animation, that's when you lead over the top. All right. So, bone chuck, just a slight lead over the top. So you got to practice it a little bit. So you got to just hit them, and you got to throw a touch. You can't throw a bullet on press. If you don't do it with a good lead, you won't get it where you're trying to hit them inside. So you can just come on a practice mode and get your reps against it. Out, out. And don't hold it too long. Sometimes that, that does happen. There we go. Perfect. So that's how you beat cover two man on press over the top. Um, you can beat any anything. Like sometimes you'll play people that might be off coverage but shade underneath if you see the underneath animation when they step forward it's a it's a over the top lead um 
Anything else will be under underneath lead, but press coverage a little quick over the top, and you can just destroy man coverage with it. Okay. Free forming on man coverage is is super fucking easy, bro. Like once you master this shit on man coverage, you can do this shit on his own. Like I I would strongly recommend practicing on man coverage because it's gonna it's gonna get you in that the quick lead. Because if you if you over lead on man, you're gonna over throw. Sometimes you can kind of get away with it on zone, but I like I said, I prefer you guys practice free forming on man coverage. That way, when you go play zone, you're not gonna over lead it. You know, in certain situations, like with bones, but see, sometimes it'd be like that. But that does come into you know, I'm using a fucking 69 over a quarter. They're not gonna let me hit fucking 100s every fucking time, you know, so eventually I'm going to throw an inaccurate pass, so just like that, bro, and that's an 86 speed receiver, bro, you don't need speed to beat man coverage if you know what to do, okay, so teach y'all versus press, now I'm going to show you off coverage, You put it up high enough, they're not going to be up. That's why I always do touch pass. Don't don't throw bullets. Now, if you're doing it off coverage, man, you wait on it. And usually, like I said, I always go to the outside and look for me or cover one hole. Probably going to go nipple. Let's go. And then off coverage, man, like I said, you're just going to wait for the defender to turn his back. If you're in the middle, like your position on the field will determine what the actual shade is. Like if you're center field, then cover one is outside. Outside shade stock. If you're left hash, then it's gonna be inside shade, outside shade on one side. If you're if you're on the right hash, then it'd be they'll they'll be flipped. But you basically just want to kind of force shades on people. So you're right, this is going to be outside shades. You're going to have an inside underneath pass lead to get it like that. So always pay attention to the shade because that's going to tell you where the, 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 to the free form. Because you're, you're just out there doing the same free form pass on every coverage wherever you're at on the ball. You're going to put picks. So always pay attention where you're at on the field. Now I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you the replay, and then I'm gonna move the ball. If you're center field, he's outside shape. He's on the outside shoulder of the, of the receiver. So you're gonna have to lead the inside, but you can get use your use your back to pivot him off. Okay. Now, if I'm over here, watch. I'm just gonna change a little bit. I won't be able to throw it outside now. Pay attention to the alignment. He gonna be outside shade. Boundary side gonna be inside shade. Watch. See how he goes inside. Now I can go underneath and catch it like that. Spot of the ball is gonna determine the trick. See, notice the difference. I get outside with the fade, and then I can come back in underneath. So that's how you attack off me. Really just. Recognize the shade and getting that that click on pivot. That's really that gives you the separation. And you can just pretty much just go down there and catch anything you want, especially if it's one on one. Eventually, they're going to have to kind of bring some safety help over there. It's just going to be unfair. Look, I done mastered this shit, and and to master this, guys. I'm, I promise you, you have to literally have to dedicate time. Anytime you get on Madden, do like 100 reps. You know, same play, 100 reps over and over and over and over again. And try to build consistency. Then if it, if it ain't reps for you, then then time yourself. Be like, okay, for 30 minutes today, I'm just going to spam this play in, in practice mode. And I'm going to do it from left hash, right hash, and center hash. And I'm going to get that muscle memory and that that hand-eye coordination on the coverage that, you know, typically I see a lot. You know, if, if it's two-man under that you see a lot, practice versus two-man under. 
If it's cover one that you see a lot, practice versus cover one. Like whatever coverage you see, because not everyone you play in Madden is going to adjust. That's that's the first thing. Not everyone's going to adjust. So the bulk of what you face is going to be running a lot of stock coverages. And if you can get good versus the stock coverages, then when it comes down to the situations where defenders have to adjust, they have to adjust to what you're good at. And then it's going to open up everything else. Then you'll be able to start opening route concepts. So like, like I said, when I do the second read, their user is going to be more over here. He's going to be Mabel in his coverage trying to defend that. And while he's adjusting his defense to defend that one route, look on the backside. I'm going to have this shit right here wide open. Okay. So there's ways to kind of force things open by just being good at freeform. You know, just kind of pay attention. He turns his back. We get the pivot. Go for the aggressive catch. You don't need speed. You can, I can do this with a shitty receiver. Watch this. I'm going to put a bomb receiver out here and do this shit. Because a lot of people be like, oh, you only got Jacoby Myers. You only got you only got the one. Bitch, I'm playing with a fucking Raiders with a 69 overall quarterback. Who fucking cares what I use? But for the purpose of teaching, I'm going to put this 64 overall receiver out here with 86 speed. I'll cover one. Okay, ready. 64 now. I know you're not going to catch everything. But we'll get him right. We'll get him right. Ready, ready. What kind of throw that was? That 80. He's not going to, like I said, he know I'm not going to catch everything. But. There, 64. It's not a receiver, it's all user. You know, having good receivers is a luxury, but you don't you don't need all that, bro. You literally take bums out here and just go go get the ball. <laughs> See ball, go get ball. I don't necessarily need to rely on high overalls. Like I said, it's just it's just his catch RNG is going to be a little bit low if he does get contacted. So it's just you really just got to get a, that extra separation like that to get it. If you can get blues, that's good. Come on, come on. Set, go. Maybe that's 64 overall with a 68 overall goddamn quarterback throwing on the ball up against the fucking Chiefs. Okay, so debunked a, debunked a lot of theories saying that you only need certain things. I mean, it helps. It gives you more consistency, but you don't need the top tier teams to be able to just have have a field day against people. So I mean, then you'd be like, okay, it's because he's, he's got good acceleration. Let me put a fucking tight end. I can literally do this shit with anybody. I'm going to put a tight end out here. He's slow, 82 speed. Go. Ready, ready. Okay, so just throw it to him. Now, he might not get to the spot quick enough, but. Go. Ready, ready. You can do this with anybody if you practice. I'm telling you, it gets to a point where you won't really be, you know, someone like if you're in a CFM, I was in a CFM before and they, they wanted to take abilities away from Devontae because I was kicking, because I, I kicked an onside kick, you know, that taking abilities and shit away from me doesn't stop me from playing the game. Okay. As long as you understand what you need to do. And go over there and yoke that bitch. See, the tight end gonna give you better after contact catch. So if you catch it with him, he might break the tackle and just go on running in there. So, like I said, you don't necessarily need him to be fast. But if he's strong, he can just got down and just big boy your ass. Simple off coverage 
I have a lot of reps throwing this, so my muscle memory is pretty much intact. Okay, so it doesn't matter who I ha ha have out there. I just know how to throw it, what I need to do with the user click on, and it, it becomes just, it's, it's all muscle memory. You know, it's like, go to practice mode. You can sit there and just, you know, and the more you do it, I say right now, I'm taking reps while I'm talking about it. You know, these reps are going to help me in live games. So when I play play again later, I already got my reps in for the day. So if you can get to a point, like sometimes I challenge myself, I'll be like, okay, can I get 20 of them in a row? You know, and I'll put my worst fucking receiver out there. And I'll be like, okay, let me get 20 in a row with my worst receiver. You know, I challenge myself. And then while I'm doing it, sometimes I might challenge myself to not just put picks. Like I'll be like, okay, can I throw a hundred of these without throwing an interception? You know, like especially if I have a game where I kind of misjudge cover one or cover three or match and I, I, I take the wrong throw, you know, I'll come to practice mode and I'll come in here and I'll challenge myself and be like, okay, I'm going to play up against that coverage and my thing is don't throw any picks. You know, keep you know, get like a hundred reps without able to do I'm not going to do it all the time. You can't do it versus press. You might be able to. I just haven't labbed it versus uh, straight press. But I can, you know. So let me let me do cover one press. Should be a little bit different. Um, obviously, this press is going to be over the top lead. So. Not bad. Uh, usually don't. Probably takes some round. Probably might not be able to do it with a tight end. I know, like, Devontae, he's going to get a release. So if I throw it to Devontae's side, he's just going to get wide open. I already know Devontae. You cannot press him. <laughs> like, that's that rule number one. You ever played fucking Raiders, bro? Don't press Devontae. Like, He's just gonna get a free release all day and then just quick quick pass over the top. Just like I was doing with that option route. Okay. So anytime I see press coverage. Sometimes you gotta get a little outside on that lead. So just bear with me. He keeps got the head though. He takes the outside. There. Over the top. Do not press Devontae. I promise you guys. Have some common sense. Have have football IQ. Understand that Devontae is Devontae for a goddamn reason. Don't press on. I gotta be dead outside. Fine. Let's go now. So I know I can do this on cover one. Just quarterback is inconsistent. Hopefully we draft one this year. And then sometimes you get that animation where he just cooks them. I know Devontae on the field side on cover one. I'm trying to get a back shoulder on that press. If I can get a back shoulder on press, that'd be nasty. But we keep beating them over the top. We'll take that. If I have a more accurate quarterback, it's going to be more consistent. That's really nice. Only thing with running Hayden, he not super active. It's even even with that completion, it's a poor accuracy. You know, it's like uh. see, they give me perfect accuracy on a defendable wall. It's like the logic of Madden. Perfect accuracy, come on, bro. I'd rather, I'd rather hit a poor accuracy if you're going to be like that. There we go. So, cover one attack the field side. You can you can do a cover one press on the field side. Um, let me just put my receivers back. Yeah, put my ears back. And I also got to practice that outside versus quarters. I know I don't do quarters on the outside a lot, but like I said, you practice against it, 
you'll get used to seeing it, you'll learn how to attack it. So it looks like it's going to be inside shade on the field side. So it's double inside shade. Let me slow it down so I can look at it. Reps. So you got to get it, get it inside and jump underneath them. Ooh, that was a good one. That was a good one. I don't know how I did that, but hold up. That's what, that's what you call fucking pass lead. Like, I literally threw it and clicked on and came back to that bitch. Like, bruh. <laughs> that's what you call a good user. Right, try not to overrun it. Look at there. Come back to the fucking ball, bro. And that's a throw out of set. It just sometimes he throws it a little too far on those. And I'm trying to pull it back, so I'm probably gonna get pass lead in. I'm trying to see if I go six or six o'clock pass lead, maybe seven. He's overrunning it. So I gotta can't be a bullet pass. I'm gonna do a you know what? I'm about to I'm about to throw a lot. Ah! Oh, let's go! Let's go! Do it again. Oh, that gives, it gives you a little bit more time to get under it, though. So I could actually go live versus match quarters. Let me get me some more space. I think I'm too close to the red zone. I mastered this shit. Eee, it's over. I won't need post routes or bomb plays. I'm just... This will be my 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 end all be all. Ugh. And I was an out of range. <laughs> Let's go. So I can do this on quarters. Okay, I'm gonna do palms next. Fucking air that bitch. Out there. Nah. And if I have a fast receiver, I need to. That man, how am I? Ah. <laughs> uh. I'm trying to see what his range is. Ah, it's to try to under it. Well, I get good with this, bro. It's always good. Cause I do play quarter spammers every now and then. You see, it's not going to be as. Now they got Chris Jones just fucking coming through. Mm. Ready, ready. Let me just double him and block the running back. Fuck that. Hey, check that, 
We got this. So I'm not, I might, what if I run a post? Can I? He's gonna match up on him. Maybe I can sneak a post behind him. And do it like that. Let me see. Okay, you can sneak a post behind it, okay. That means. But y'all see, y'all see what I'm cooking. Gotta be alive. Bro, motherfucking Chris Jones. I double teamed her ass. He's still out there. Let me, let me try something different here. Let me do Do that in twenty one cuts deep. Um, let me do it like this. Actually, now let's do a quick out loud. Yeah, it's, it's open, it's just the line doesn't want to block. Yeah, I'm just trying to find something. Real quick, let's see if I can put put something in the lab real quick. I think I'm probably gonna have to. He goes to the outside. He, he's getting open. Sneed just a fast BB, so he's gonna take him wherever he goes. So I don't have nothing to worry about with him. Let's see. What the option route can do. The option route is just going to carry him off to another safety. So I could go hold him in, I guess. Why yeah. well, sneak fast as fuck, bro? <laughs> yeah. He tough, so he's gonna be matched anyway. So I might have to go three by one. So he's gonna take the number two though. He's gonna go right there. He's taking him. I'm, I'm just looking, man. I'm just taking some reps. Just give me a sec, bro. I'm trying to see if there's something new I can create. I'll probably do like a levels. With a post over, maybe. But that's going to give it a bracket, so. Okay, I see something. I need to dig off the back side. Oh, I forgot about this trick. I used to use this one versus match. 
And see squares open. I y'all ain't seen me do that one in a while. I used to do a versus cover three press. Like that was another way that I attacked press coverage. I know I, I ain't said much about it lately. But there's a cover three press defense. Sometimes you'll see them. I think most of them be like in dime defenses. All right, buzz press. Watch it. So when, sometimes I'll see that and I don't get, and you you know it's outside shade because of how they're pressed. So sometimes I'll flip them like that so that he can't press me, and I can I can get that lead. So that's another way to counter cover three press defenses. I know it's, it's, a, it's a little hidden motion that you can do to get swap the press. It's like that. Just motion them out. And you can sit there. See how he gets pulled inside through the number two. So if you're you're playing someone, they run a lot of cover three press. That's going to be your counter for it right there. Again, like I said, you still got to master the free form. And the user click on it, so. Let's see. Oh, obviously, you got that little glitcher out, too. Like, he'll run a quick fade. Is my phone about to die? Actually, it was like this. You motion the fade over, he becomes the little goal line fade. Then you motion him back, he's going to keep the goal line fade. And then you motion the number two over, so he doesn't get pressed on the fade. Like that. Just go ahead and make sure he sets his feet. And then boom. See, I, I got some stuff, man. I got some stuff. I'm just trying to see how long that would take to do. So you motion the deep fade, it becomes the goal line fade. Bring him back. I'm just not sure how much time they would give you on a clock. It seems like Myra's taking a while to sit, but you see right there, it just destroys cover three. That'd be like the the easier version here we go, here we go. to attack it. I'm trying to see if there's another one. And then there was like another play that I like too. Started being using it a lot lately versus certain people that spam defenses. Like I go back to the bunch trail. I know everybody runs it their own little way, but you can use this like against running them plays. All you need is this little out route and motion him out instead of running him vertical. The reason why you don't want to run him vertical because I try to tell you guys you don't need your routes touching each other because you might be playing someone that got match coverage on and that crosser, I mean that corner and your little vertical route, they might be interceding a defender at the same time when you throw the ball and then that outside zone will be able to defend that corner route. So doing it this way basically stresses that, that defender that's outside. If he backs off you got the out route if he drops down you can wait on the corner now if this man outside shade on the corner which is how you stop corner routes the best most effective way then you can goddamn hit the tight end on the uh the zebra all right so boom he bites down and look at look at that shit that is so much better than trying to run a vertical right at it Trying to tell you guys. Having fucking run pro 86 speed. I don't know what fucking defense he was in. I just know that was a one play touchdown. And he got confused, bro. I don't know how I did it, but that outright that out route confused the defense. So it could have been palms. Pretty sure it could have been palms. Because that would be 
quarter, quarter, half, soft squat. Nothing goes underneath on soft squat. He's going to go, yeah, that was, that was cover six. And without sending that route vertical, you force him, that palm quarter, to play low. And now he ain't got no help over the top. Stop running shit like the meta, man. Hit me up for a scheme. Yeah, everybody else will probably run that shit like this. And I want to show you why you don't. See, now you're pulling an extra defender over there, and it's going to be a contested catch. You don't want to do that. You want everything to be easy, but make it open. Doesn't matter what the defense is, read the out route. All right? It's going to tell you what to do. He bites down. Probably get a little bit better on that. Click on. I went left instead of that right and down. That right, says so press. Sometimes you just don't. You just gotta be a skill based catch. Sometimes you might have a shade that's not favorable to you. And you're gonna have to free form it behind them. But just read the out route. Sometimes if you use something too much in practice mode, they start shedding. You have to, to slide protect over to the right. And then you can just playmaker them up. If you got a mobile quarterback, you could probably take off. I think they're just going to lock it up now. And I ran it too many times. And set. And you just come back to to that route. But I'm gonna take a breather, fellas. I do appreciate y'all tuning in. Like I said, if y'all want a session or whatever, ten dollars, just hit me up. All right.